extremely self-denial about himself and gave so much suffering to his body. Finally having both, you know, the 
experiences both extremes, finally he himself realized enlightenment for the Buddhahood. So after he came to this world as a Buddha, there was a purpose to being a Buddha and being in this world and supporting and helping to the world find freedom and happiness and joy in their lives. That was the purpose of the Buddha's life. So one time, Buddha and his attendant, Anand, uh, they were traveling and they came to a river. So in ancient India still, and you can see the Brahmin people, always, you know, you know the, at the arguments and uh, issues with the Buddha. So there was a Brahmin and standing next to the river bank. Now Buddha and attendant Ananda also standing and waiting for the boat to cross the river. So then Brahmin and looking at the Buddha and gave him really bad, you know, the smile and he just walked on the water and crossed the river. How wonderful. It's easy, he doesn't want to pay anything, he just walked on the water and crossed the river. Then attendant Anand, he felt a little um, sad because it's a kind of insult to the Buddha. And attendant Anand, he knows Buddha has those powers too. He can do that. Then he said, Buddha, you know, that's not good. He insulted us. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's walk. Then Buddha said, be patient. Just wait. Then the man who ride the board, the, the board man came and then Buddha asked, how much you are charging to cross one person, you know, to go to the other side, cross the river? Then the person said, one penny. Then Buddha looking at Ananda and he said, what that Brahmin did, the value is one penny. So no need to use your powers for the low quality thing. So then Buddha said, my purpose coming to this world to show the magic to the people and show how to walk on the water, that's not the purpose becoming the Buddha. Now we are talking about him after 2600 years later. So many people interested and so many people like about his teaching, so many people um, attracting to his teachings and I can see so many uh, local uh, American people uh, try to follow his teaching. So, last uh, two weeks I was traveling and I was in Arizona, then I was in Las Vegas. And just two weeks. It was an uh, interesting experience I had. Uh, one of my friends, friend, and they are uh, Vietnamese Chinese and they have a big family restaurant. Then they heard, oh, there's a Buddhist monk in the area, so we have invited him to our restaurant. They are Buddhist, and so they need blessings. I always do the blessing for the people, it's not a big deal. And, you know, you know always I am giving my heart for the people, lovingly and kindly. So their purpose, they are ethnic Buddhist people, their purpose, inviting me to their restaurant. I felt it, I knew it, but I had to handle it very mindfully. They need blessings to success their business, to make more money. So they didn't tell me directly about it, but I can see what they are looking for. They need the blessings. So I always go to the families and the people, the situations, and if they need blessings, I do blessing. But doing blessing, I cannot make money. So if anybody has you know, expectation after Bhante doing the blessing for our restaurant, more customers will come. We make more, a couple uh, thousand dollars. So if they have expectation, that is dangerous. That's really harming with the Buddha's teaching and the Buddha's path. And so then one older lady, and she came to me and we need the blessing for our restaurant. I said, of course, I'm going to do the blessings. That's the, you know, the tradition. I always love to do that. So then she said, you have to do the blessing to make more money. I said, wait a minute. I can do the blessing, but I cannot do the guarantee you are making more money. Then she said, 
that's not, that means your blessing is not working. <laughs> <laughs> I said, of course, it is not working to make money. So then I realized, but anyway, I did the blessing. So after that, I, I changed their mindset. That's what I did. And then I explained to them the blessing I can do from my heart for your well-being, for your safety, and I can give my compassion and love to everybody. But I don't have power to bring more dollars to your family or your business. So their intention was to make money using this mark. So one time I was in Singapore. <laughs> so there was a big Bodhi, Banyan tree, the Bodhi tree. You know, the Buddha attained to the enlightenment people, meditate under that Bodhi tree. Uh, one man came and, you know, bowed to me and said, I need some blessing. I said, sure. Then, you know, always when you do the blessing, we go to the, under the, you know, the Bodhi tree and sit down and meditate and do the chanting and do the blessing. Then before the blessing, he grabbed something from his pocket and then he gave it to me. He said, like a paper. Then I asked, what is that? You had to bless for this. Then I opened. I was kind of shocked myself. It's a lotto ticket, you know, the, you know, what is it? <laughs> lottery, lottery, lottery ticket. So then he asked me, please bless for this lottery ticket to make millions of dollars. <laughs> then I said, I'm very sorry, I cannot do that. So if you, after I do the blessing, if you don't receive a million dollars, then what will happen to you? Then you think he's not a good Buddhist monk. He doesn't, his blessing doesn't work, and so that's not right. I said, I will do the blessing for you, but I have not guaranteed you are going to make this money. That's my nature. If even people ask me to do something like that, I do my blessing, but I cannot guarantee. That is not the, what Buddha was talking about. That is not the purpose of the Buddhist teaching. That is not the purpose of the Buddha coming to this world. So, if you want to make money, what you have to do? Work. <laughs> work so hard. Work, you know, the 15 hours per day if you want to make money. And don't be lazy. That's what Buddha said. Don't be lazy. Work hard, study, and improve your skills, and then you make money. Then you can uh, well establish business owner. You can do that. No need to have Buddha. So, if Buddha wants to do that, he stay in the palace and, you know, the supporting the people around the country and make the money. That's not his purpose. So, even being in that palace, having all the luxurious life, he experienced this money, this wealth doesn't work for happiness. That's why he left. Otherwise, he stayed in the palace and enjoy his life. So, it doesn't mean, you know, that you had to renounce your life this evening after you listen to this Dhamma talk. No, you have to be in the home, you have to understand what is the purpose of the Buddha's teaching? What is the purpose? What do you understand? Being, you know, here, keep coming to the Blue Lotus Temple. What is the purpose? What do you understand? What is your purpose? Come to this temple. What you are looking for? Peace. Anything? Joy. Hmm? Joy. joy, peace and joy. So, think about even we have all the life with material thing here in this country, how many people are happy with those material things? I know some people, they are multi-millionaires. They have money, in, no, no, all the money, they can throw money out. They come to me and say, Bhante, how much money you want? I can give any money. So I'm always suggesting, okay, give it to Tempo. <laughs> We need money for the temple, so that's my suggestion. So I know the people, when they come to me and tell and talk about their luxurious life, but always they're telling me, Bhante, I cannot buy peace, happiness and joy using my money. So Buddha or Prince Siddhartha, he realized being in the palace, that is not his life, that is not our life. Beyond that wealth, beyond that luxurious life, there is something else. That is the purpose Buddha attained to the enlightenment. So, when I do this temple, when I start in this center, I always thinking, 
I am going to help people to find happiness and joy. It doesn't matter who they are, it doesn't matter what kind of a religious background they are coming to this place. I always thinking I want to help them find their inner peace. So how that inner peace turning into blessings? Then your inner your own inner peace you can turn into the blessings, not making the material things or the money. So when you come to the Buddhist teaching, the blessing comes from your heart. So blessing come from your heart. So if you want to make blessing, what you have to do? What you have to do? Feel peaceful and hmm? happy. Yes, feel peaceful and happy. So then you have something inside you, then you can share this peace and happiness with other people. That is the Buddhist blessing. So sometimes people come to me and it's a very popular word, please pray for me. So sometimes I am very careful, I don't know what they mean. So different people define that word, the praying, is a different way. Because it has a lot of religious background for that, you know, the word prayer. Sometimes people say, I am praying. Some people mean they are meditating. Some people say, I am praying. That means sometimes people are doing, I am doing blessings. Sometimes people use the word praying, that means praying to the God. So the different people use that word the different situation. So always when people ask me, Bhante please pray for me, I always ask them, what do you mean? What do you want? So I want to cl clarification before I start to do something, otherwise people misunderstand the whole Buddhist teaching and oh Bhante Sujata he has to do something, you know, the bless for our business and do something like that. I remember one time one man who was expecting to receive a lot of money praying to the Buddha, he didn't get it. What he did, he threw out the Buddha statue. He, you know, throw it to the Buddha statue. He said, I'm not Buddhist anymore. I'm not praying to the Buddha anymore. Why? Buddha didn't give me anything. So people have different expectations. I know you are coming from totally different background. I don't think you have that expectation when you come to the temple. Only expectation you have, I want to find peace, joy and happiness. That is the purpose of the Buddhist teachings. Does it make sense? So any questions? Any questions? Yes? I think um, prayer, positive energy, mm -hmm. loving kindness, meditation, mm -hmm. so energy. Right. Yeah, energy. Energy coming from you. Yeah. Doing something good. Yeah. Practicing and cultivating, right? Exactly. Anything else? Where did the tradition of holding Buddha's belly for good luck come from? <laughs> I think it is come from China. <laughs> you see them in all the lottery stations. They have the little Buddha. Yeah, because you know we have to understand because Buddhism originated in India and expand into the so many different countries. So when teaching move into the different countries, always taking the country's, you know, the shape, the culture, always mix with the culture. So then all the cultural things, you know, the, come to the Buddhist teaching. Now we have Sri Lankan Buddhism. There is no such, the, the Chinese Buddhism, Japanese Buddhism, there is no such things. Buddhism, even I don't like to use the word Buddhism. You know, we call the Buddha Dharma, Buddha's teaching. So, I always explain to the people, Buddhist teaching, Buddha Dharma, it doesn't have a shape. It's like water. It's freely flow all over the world. So, when teaching moves into the different countries, it takes country's shape. Then, people forget what is the content, what is the container. Now, 2600 years later, what will happen? So many cultural things around the Buddhist teaching, now people are so worrying about the container more than the content. So, we have to focus on the content and respect to the container. So, we are living in this country, now we are respecting to this container, but we are coming from the different country. We are respecting to your culture. That's why I left all these state class. 
Why? I am respecting to this culture. I don't want to destroy that. So, but still, I am focusing on the content. So now when you see all those things, that's not what Buddha said. That's cultural. So we have to understand what is the culture, what is the teaching. Does it make sense? So always good luck, rub the belly, right? <laughs> Something wonderful, right? You know, I, I'm not, you know, the, you know, telling you if that's a bad thing. If you want to feel that, that's good, rub somebody's belly. <laughs> that's good. It's not mine. <laughs> Don't try mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but that's not Buddha, that's not what Buddha was talking about. That's not the purpose. Probably his belly, you know. <laughs> and also that you know, the big belly Buddha, and so that's not the historical Buddha. Right? So many people think, who is that Buddha? Big belly Buddha or skinny Buddha? And people are asking that question always. Um, I thought that the that, that representation of the Buddha with larger belly. I thought that was um, Bodhisattva. Yeah, it's, you know, they call the Bodhisattva, Hotai. You know, that's the name like of it, not, Hotai. Like not quite a Buddha. Right. Because I heard somewhere that the person is represented sitting in a lotus flower, that means yeah. that they're Actually, that Bodhisattva is a wonderful person, but the way people interpret that is totally wrong. People think just for the good luck. And, but what he did, when you really read about his life, he's a great bodhisattva and he's doing so many good things to people and supporting the people. Now people use him as a symbol, symbol for good luck. Why many years later people forget the meaning. Same thing for other religions. I always thought the big Chinese mm-hmm. Buddhists as generosity. Yeah, exactly. So, so many things. People take that as good luck, you know, to win the lottery. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. Which I think is a generosity yeah. of art. Mm-hmm. You know? So it's, you know, it's very interesting when I was in that restaurant, then they said, you know, I had to walk around and do the blessing. So, you know, always we do and, you know, the, doing so many different things to when you do the blessing. Then they took me to the kitchen, restaurant kitchen. It's a big kitchen like this. <coughs> <laughs> then what I was thinking, they have to clean up this kitchen. That is the place. <laughs> I didn't say that. That I was thinking, you know, after I come home, I, I talk to my friend. Um, I said, I never go to that restaurant again to eat. Because I saw the real restaurant behind, you know, the kitchen. It's a lot of, you know, I cannot even explain. I never seen such a place. I was thinking they have cleaned that kitchen first. That is the blessing. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs>